Today we're going to learn how to create a contact form inside our website and this is something you guys have requested of me to do so today we're going to do it. As you guys can see here I have a very basic index page that has nothing special inside of it except for maybe a pair of main tags and inside the main tags is where we're going to create the contact form using HTML that is going to send the email from our website to some kind of email address we have. Now one thing I want to point out here is that I'm not going to style in this lesson here because it's not really the main purpose of today's tutorial but I did actually create some styling that I'm just going to apply after we created the form just so we have something nice to look at inside the website. So if you guys want to style it just go ahead and style it after we created the contact form. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do inside the main text is I'm going to create a paragraph because I would like to have a title for my contact form. So I'm going to say send email just so people know exactly what they're doing inside this form here. And underneath here, I'm going to create a pair of form tags. Now I just used the shortcut by clicking tap and inside the attributes here, we're just going to go ahead and add a class to the form tag. I'm going to call this one contact dash form. And again, this is for styling purposes. We don't really need this in order to actually get this working technically, but I'm just going to go ahead and include the class. Now the action we're going to change to contact form.php like so and the method is going to be a post method. Now inside the form tags we're going to create the first input tag which is going to be set to text. We're going to set the name to name because I would like for people to actually send me the name of you know whoever is sending me an email. So I'm going to have that as an input. I'm not going to set a value but I will set a placeholder which I'm going to set to full name. Then I'm just going to copy the input, paste it underneath here a couple more times. And then I'm going to change the second one to mail because we want to have an email from the person who sends us an email. We're going to change the placeholder to your email. Now the third input, we're going to change the name to subject. And we're going to change the placeholder to subject. Now underneath the input we're going to create a text area. And we're just going to go ahead and change the name to message. We're going to change the placeholder which we don't have yet so I'm just going to copy it from up here and replace the other attributes we had as a default when I created the shortcut. And I'm going to change the placeholder to message. Underneath the text area, I'm going to insert a button. I'm going to change the type to submit. And the name is going to be submit. Like so. Inside the button, we're going to have a piece of text that says send mail. And that is pretty much all we need to have in order to get this form working. So if we're to go inside the browser, refresh. You guys can see we have a very basic form. It's not styled yet so it doesn't look pretty but if I were to go inside my index page and just add my style sheet to it. So I'm just going to create a link to my style sheet. So I'm going to say style.css. I'm also going to go ahead and import a new font inside the website because I would like to not just use the default fonts. And again this is basic HTML so I'm not really going to get too much into how to import fonts. You guys should know that by now. So I'm going to save it refresh the browser and as you guys can see we now have a slightly different looking contact form so we can actually type things inside here if we want to and right now nothing is going to happen when we do actually click send mail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back inside my website and I'm going to create a new page or a new file. I'm going to save this file inside my root folder as contact form dot PSP like so. And inside the contact form.php file, I'm going to open up the PHP tags. So we can actually create some PHP code. And the first thing I'm going to create is an if statement because we need to actually check if we did actually submit the contact form. So I'm going to say is set, which is a function. And then I'm going to check for a post method called submit because that's what I called the button when I clicked it. And then inside the curly brackets, we're going to start creating the actual script that will actually send the email. 
So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the actual data that the user wrote inside the inputs and the text area. So I'm going to say we have a variable and the first one is going to be named name, which is equal to dollar sign underscore post brackets semicolon inside the brackets we're going to say we have an input that had a name as name i'm going to copy this line of code paste it underneath three more times because we had four inputs in total including the text area i'm going to change the second one to subject inside the name over here as well or inside the the post name and i'm going to change the third one to mail from because you want to know who's actually sending the mail and the way I usually do it is by saying mail from when I name a variable here. I'm going to change the post name to mail because that was the email the person sent to us. And then the last one down here is going to be message. And I'm going to change it inside the post method as well, like so. So now we have all the data from the contact form. And the next thing we need to do is we need to prepare a PHP function called mail. So we're going to say we have a method called mail, parentheses, semicolon. And inside the mail function, we need to have at least three parameters. The first one is going to be the email that we want to send the mail to, which is going to be us, because it's other people going inside our website sending an email to us. The second one is going to be the subject of the mail. The third one is going to be the actual message of the mail. Now we do also have a couple of optional parameters after the actual message. And the one that we're going to focus on this episode is the one called a header. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go back up in between the data we got from the person and the mail function. And I'm going to create some of the ones that were missing inside the mail function. So right now we need to have a variable that has the email that the mail needs to send to. So I'm going to say we have a variable called mail2, which is equal to some kind of email address. And that's going to be my email address, which at the moment is danny at mmtoots.net, like so. Now, one thing I need to point out here is that if you want to send to your own Gmail address, it's not going to work because Gmail or Google is going to block the emails that you send using the mail function built into PHP. So you will not be able to send to your Gmail address if that's what you wish to do. But I do have a way for you to get around it if you want to have the mail sent to your Gmail. So I will show you guys how to do that at the end of this episode here, okay? So after we have the email address, we need to have the header that I want to include. So I'm going to save a variable called headers which I'm going to set equal to. And inside the headers, we can actually add extra information to the mail when they do actually send it to us. This could be who the mail is from. So you can actually see, you know, when you receive the mail, who it's actually from. It could also be a CC if you want other people to receive the email when they do actually send it. There's a couple of things we can add in here, but the one we're going to focus on is going to be who the mail is from, because that's the one I think is really important. So we're going to say double quotes. Then we're going to write from with a big F, colon, space, now we could just write from my website if you wanted to, and then it's actually going to say that it's from your website when you receive the email, but I would actually like for it to show the email of the person who sent the, the message to us. So I'm going to go after the double quote, write dot, and then include the, the email from the person who actually filled in the contact form, which is the mail from up here that we got from the person. There we go. Underneath the headers, I'm going to include one more piece of information, which is going to be the actual message that we're going to receive inside our email. And you might be thinking, well, didn't the user already write a message up here? Well, sometimes you want to have a customized message when we have it sent to us. So we're going to do that as well. So I'm going to save a variable called TXT, which stands for text, which is equal to double quotes. And then I'm going to say that we have a message saying, you have received an email from space and then after the double quote I'm going to say dot then the name of the person which is up here paste it in and now what I want to do is I want to end up this line here with a punctuation go down two lines and then actually write the entire message the person sent to us and the way we're going to do this is first of all we need to change back to a string and then we need to add the 
punctuation at the end of the line. And then in order to jump down two lines, we're going to say not forward slash, but backslash N, which means that we're going to a new line. Then we're going to add one more because we want to jump down two lines to get a bit of spacing between this message here and the actual message the person sent to me, which again, if you guys are confused about this, I'll show you guys when I do actually receive the email, okay? Afterwards, we're going to say punctuation, and then I want to add the message. So I'm going to say we have a variable called message, semicolon. And now we have the entire message sent to us. So what we need to do now is we just simply need to fill in the mail function that we have down here. So we're going to say we have a function called mail2, which is up here, comma. And then we want to have the subject, which is going to be up here. I'm going to paste it in, comma. And then the third one is going to be the text or the message that is being sent to us, comma. And then I want to include the headers here because I want to have who it's from. And there we go. Now the last thing we need to include is of course a function that takes us back to the front page when this page has loaded and it's done. So I'm going to say header parentheses after the mail function. And then inside the parentheses, I'm going to say we have double quotes, location with a big L, colon, space, index, dot, PHP, question mark, mail, sent. Just so we get some kind of confirmation that the mail has actually been sent and the contact script has actually been loaded, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to test it out. Now, this is where you're going to run into a problem because this might not work if you're using localhost as your way to do the PHP lesson here with me. Again, you guys can see I'm also using localhost to actually show you guys. So there's two methods we can choose if you want to actually test out if this is actually working or not. One being that we need to change the php.ini file inside our localhost server, which we downloaded using XAMPP, or we can simply upload this to an online server, such as a website, to actually test if it's actually working. Now I chose to not do the complicated thing and change my php.ini file. So I simply uploaded it to my mmtoots.net website and just put it inside a different directory just so we could test it out. So as you guys can see, this is actually my online version that, that has all the code working. So what I'm going to do before we actually test this out is to show you guys that I have a inbox from inside one.com, which are the people that are actually hosting my website right now. And inside my inbox, I have no messages. I deleted everything so we could test it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and send an email to myself. So I'm going to write Daniel Nielsen. I'm going to say that my email is usemmtoots at gmail.com. And again, remember, this is not the email that you're going to send to. This is the email address that I'm saying that my email address is as the person who visits your website. So this is not going to mess up anything because it's a Gmail address. I'm going to go down to the next line and I'm going to say we have a subject saying hi there or something. Then I'm going to write a message that says I am testing this email function inside your website. Then what we can do is we can actually test out the, the message and send it. And as you guys can see up inside my URL, I do get a mail send confirmation. If I go inside my webmail, you guys can see that if I refresh, after a few seconds, I received my email. And as you guys can see, it says that it's from use mm toots, which is what I wrote inside my contact form. And the subject is hi there. If I open it up, you guys can see that we have a from, a to, and a message down here that has spacing in between it because we wrote the backslash n, backslash n, in order to get it on a new line. So this is basically how we can get this email system working. Now, the last thing we're going to do here is I'm going to show you guys how you can actually receive emails using Gmail if you want to. So what I'm going to do here as a solution is that right now I'm inside my hosting service. I'm actually logged into my dashboard over here in a different tab. And if you're familiar with your hosting service, you should know that if you go inside the dashboard, you can go inside your email settings and then you can forward messages that you receive inside your hosting service. So the mailbox that I have here, which is inside one.com's own website, I can actually forward these messages to my email address if I want to. So I can actually create a new alias down here and forward it. So I'm always going to receive the emails inside my Gmail address as well. So this is how I would actually go around fixing this if you want to have messages sent to your Gmail address, okay? Now this was basically what I wanted to show you guys today, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.